Most people don't use that CPI number for where the Fed has to go, Mark. They look at tips and other things, and, and they're somewhere down. They think we need to get above 4 or 5% core inflation by the Fed. You really think we need to get up above what the printed CPI number is? You think the Fed needs to actually... I mean, where we are right now, how, that would take how long to get there, even with three 75 basis point moves? That would, that would take how many meetings to get to, to, to what you just well, if, indicated? Well, you know, if they go up, uh, if they go up 1 or 2 percent uh, at each meeting, then they can get there pretty quickly. Uh, and it seems to me that if they really want to uh, do something and have some effect, they've got to have much bigger jumps in their inflation target rate. Um, and you can see, again, taking a page from Volcker, what he did. He was uh, pretty ruthless in raising rates, and it had the effect of uh, bringing down inflation, of course, with lots of pain. But uh, the problem I think the Fed has is that they're not accounting for the yeah. cryptocurrencies. You must remember, cryptocurrencies now represent something like 10 percent of the money supply. We're talking about $3 trillion roughly, for cryptocurrencies. And on the margin, in view of the incredible trading that takes place in cryptocurrencies, uh, ignoring that it doesn't make any sense. And, of course, it makes it more difficult for the Fed yeah. to do anything about it because uh, they don't have control over the cryptocurrency world. Right. Well, Paul Volcker, he was very tall, uh, Mark. So you're saying 1% one, 1 is on the horizon at some point, and you said... Did you say 2% possibly in a single meeting for the Fed? That could, I, I, don't, I don't think that's possible. You're too far away from the United States, I think. Are you sure? <laughs> I think it's quite possible. If you, again, if you look at the history, and I think uh, the Fed is looking at the, the history in the past, and they realize they've got to do something quickly and more effectively. Uh, and I, I, obviously did he do the a 2%? Did, did Volcker do a 2%? I, I mean, I was there, but I don't remember whether he did a, a, a 2% or not. So you, you think that that is a pos that's That could be, that would be very dire. Things would have to get really a lot worse for that to, to happen. They're barely talking 1%, and most people say they won't even go to 1% because it sends the wrong signal. They'll continue at 75 basis points. You think things are actually going to deteriorate from where they are now to where they're forced to do that? I think so. I think the uh, the game plan is uh, if you want to beat inflation, you've got to raise interest rates. And uh, they are not looking at the stock market, or they shouldn't be looking at the stock market if they're working according to their rules and regulations in the central bank. They should be saying, look, we've got to have stability. In order to do that, we've got to raise interest rates. And that means do it quickly. In, in other words, Try to hit it as quickly as possible. Otherwise, it can get worse. Well, you must remember like the U.S. Is, yeah, despite the fact that fuel prices are down, uh, if you look at the wage situation, look at the labor situation, it's a really very inflationary in America. There's shortage of, of workers in many industries. So that is another fact that you have to look at. It's not just about fuel, about oil prices. You're talking about a really hard uh, landing. Uh, then that, that the Fed would need to orchestrate, and there'd be more, more pain than I think we're uh, anticipating uh, in the economy. Do you think we need to do anything? That's demand. There are many people that think we need to do things with supply, and that is, you know, and, and it's sort of the opposite of raising rates so that people can't start businesses, people can't invest, capital gets more expensive. All those things make supply even worse. So it's kind of counterintuitive that that's the right move. Would you suggest that tax cuts or de re deregulation or, or, or some means to, to increase the supply or, or just kill the economy well, with higher interest rates? Well, that's a very good point. I think if you uh, uh, reduce the regulation, if you reduce taxes, uh, that, of course, uh, helps the economy tremendously. And then companies can live with high interest rates. High interest rates doesn't necessarily have to kill the economy, because we've seen many cases in the past where the economy was doing very well with relatively high interest rates. So if you combine the high interest rates uh, with uh, cuts in uh, tax rates and uh, less regulation, of course, that would help to a great degree. But of course, you'll be working at cross purposes. The administration would be doing one thing and the Fed would be doing another thing. But that's OK. At the end so, of the day, people will be happy. 